And that black cloud were locusts. And the locusts came and they swarm in. So if you're there, if you track with me, turn to Joel. In uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 1, uh, and we're going to read 1 through 4. He said, The word of the Lord came to Joel, and the, the son of Pethul. Hear this, you elders, and give ear, all you inhabitants of the land. Has anything like this happened in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell your children about it. Let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. What the chewing locusts left, the swarming locusts have eaten. What the swarming locusts left, the crawling locusts have eaten. And what the crawling locusts left, the consuming locusts has eaten. He is sending devastation on to them to get their attention. Imagine that black swarm just coming in to garnish, just and destroying everything. And then a man comes and said, hey, this is all from God. And, and it's all from God because of the way you're living and you're not doing things. Right? Joel's theme is the day of the Lord and the need for God's people to be prepared. The key verses are chapter, in chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. Now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. And it says, so rent your heart and not your garments. Turn to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. That word in mind where it says rend means to tear. So when the Jewish people would come to a point of, oh my gosh, something major happened, or they were turning to the Lord, they would take and just tear their clothes, raw, in a means of sorrow and all this. And he's like, look, don't tear your clothes. Tear your heart. Yeah. Tear your heart, not your clothes. Because he wants them to come back. Remember I told you, he gives a warning. Hey, this is happening because of you. But then the promise of deliverance. You see the promise of deliverance right here. Look, if you tear your heart and you go into fasting and you're weeping for, for everything, he said, I want to relent. I don't want to continue this. Man, how many times in our lives, and I'll, I always try to take some of the word as application, in our lives when something goes on, you know, and, and we, we cry out to God, oh Lord, help me. We, we begin to confess our sin, I'm sorry for doing that, or whatever. And then that which is coming relents, because his desire is to relent, right, in our lives. Joel's name means the Lord is God. The Lord is God. So now come with me. We're going to go to Amos. So I told you it's a history lesson. We're kind of breezing through. I told, I was telling Pastor Allen that we're going to kind of go through the minor prophets and stuff as, as a history lesson. And I'm running short on time, so I'm going to, I'm going to uh, kind of shorten it up a little bit so we, we can end on time. And you know what? There's, maybe there'll be another time and we'll be able to pick up and continue on. Or my desire is that that what I'm talking about and sharing with you would prick your heart and desire to go and get more, or the palate in your mouth would desire more, like a good cup of coffee. <laughs> I am a coffee guy, by the way. <laughs> so Amos, Amos is kind of neat. Um, Amos has eight different demographic people that he actually is going to preach to. Um, and we're going to breeze through all eight of them, I hope. Um, so Amos, in the time, it was uh, it's very much like our time. It was a, a nation of optimism. Um, businesses were booming, luxury abounded, religion was popular. People were doing church, checking out the box. They were going and watching, you know, sermons on cable TV instead of going to church where they could be held accountable. You know, video services and, and on and on. But the sin was continuing, and making money was more important, more important than worshiping God. Does that not sound familiar? I'm sorry, I couldn't make the church. I had to go to work. How about the fact that businesses are open on Sunday, you know, and, and not nothing here because it's open for people to come and go. But I'm talking about the folks that work in offices or, you know, they're online and they can't they can't go, they can't do it. And I think it's great, don't get me wrong, for those folks who can't get out to have a good church service that's on TV, absolutely, because you're doing what you can. 
What I have a hard time with in those video services is they, they got to be such a big church that they got campuses and you got a video screen and the guy up there, and man, we went to, my daughter was going to a church in Virginia Beach and she's in the Navy. And it was a video one. I'm like, God. And the guy videoed him, I don't know, from his house in Colorado maybe, months ago. And we're sitting there and it was like, it's amazing how we had some of that stuff up there. I'm like, honey, why don't you just go to a church where it's live, where there's some accountability? You know, anyway, uh, soapbox, I'm getting off. Um, um, you know, the rich exploited the poor. Um, the judicial system were corrupt. Um, injustice flourished. Sounds like today. Yeah. I just couldn't believe. Like I said, when you start to read and study this, you're like, wow, you can really relate to this stuff, you know? Um, it's funny. Let's read, um, let's read in Amos chapter 1. We're going to read the first, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read, we'll read the first two verses. The word of Amos, who was among the sheep herders of Tekora, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. We don't really read much about an earthquake, but you know that stuff was going on because these guys tell you, right? And he said, the Lord roars from Zion, and he utters his voice from Jerusalem. The pastures of the shepherds mourn, and the top of Carmel withers. Last year, in January, I was in Israel, and I was at Carmel, <laughs> and I've been to these places, and it is amazing. If you ever get a chance to go, you've got to go. It is the most beautiful country I've ever been to, and I've been to a few, you know. Um, and so one of the things is he roars from Zion. And, you know, we always have that picture of, of Christ, the lion, the tribe of Judah, the lion of Judah, right? We see that roar, and he gives us that, where he roars it out from Zion, from Jerusalem. Man, when Jerusalem is up on a hill, if, if you don't know. And, when, and it's made out of the Jerusalem stone, which is like a white soapstone. And when the sun sets at night, it turns, that's why they call it a city on a hill, is like a light, is because it turns gold. It looks like, and they call it the city of gold, because it turns all gold. And it is beautiful. The cool part is when you read the scriptures, it always talks about everybody goes up to Israel, up to Israel, up to Israel, because it's at the apex. It is at the top, and you do, you actually go up. And the unique thing is when you're on a bus and all that stuff, and you come under this under this bridge, this little tunnel bridge you go through, and all of a sudden everybody starts singing that welcome home song. The whole place erupts in worship. It's amazing. And then you're looking at this huge, beautiful, it's, it's like a soapstone, white soapstone, beautiful city. It's just like, wow. Nothing like it in the entire world. Kind of cool. But he talks about, you know, he talks about that the, the Lord is roaring from Zion. The, in the Mount Zion in, in talking about Jerusalem. <clears throat> and he says, um, as we go through, to he's going to speak to Damascus, Gaza, Tyre, Edom, Amon, Moab, Judah, and Israel. And he says, because of your transgressions, I will not turn away from my punishment. This is the warning that he gives as he goes through. And when you read it, it says, um, in, in verse 3, it says, Thus says the Lord, this is the judgment to the nations, for three transgressions of Damascus, and for four I will not turn away punishment, because they have threshed Gilead with implements of iron. But I will send a fire into the house of Hazel, which will which shall devour the palaces of ben -Hadon. And so what he talks about here, when he talks about that they threshed them with iron, the Gilead, the, the, the city of Gilead, is that God used these people to judge Israel. So he used the Assyrians and the Chaldeans to come in and, and to, to correct or to take in. The problem is they went too far. They were taking this iron and they were beating the people as though they were a stock of wheat with iron bars and just beaten on. Um, and God doesn't take kindly to that. Sorry. God doesn't take, 
take kindly to the mistreatment. Now, he's going to do things to punish you, but he doesn't take kindly to the mistreatment of his people. Um, and he's, it's going to come for them, I can tell you that, because you think about it. Um, he says, I will send fire down. Fire. We think about fire. We would drive by them. Uh, the other night, uh, all the fire trucks went past my house, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. I saw smoke, and this morning as we drove by, one of the old barns had burned down, and they put it out. It's like, dude, they should have just let that thing burn all the way, because <laughs> it's an old barn out back, but now it's a structure hazard. Anybody out there could fall, somebody get hurt, whatever. But anyway, he sends fire. Fire is a destruction. Well, here's what we know about fire. Fire, when he talks about fire coming down, he's talking about the holiness and the judgment of God. I am sending the holiness and the judgment of God unto you. And he says, I will not relent. Although we know he will because he always does, because he is a merciful God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Gaza, they're Philistines, and they were going through the land, raiding the Jewish villages.